I mean, tonight we are really talking a lot of positive sides of dads. So it is not anymore that dad means that they don't do anything. It's not that anymore. Well, and I, well I think we're, we're going to turn, we're gonna turn, turn them. No, we're not going to go for Sunil, Sunil ji right now because Sunil ji really admitted that uh, that he, is, I mean, always feels that he is at guilt. That uh, well, well, I, I do want to yeah. redeem him on that because yeah. I think you know he feels the guilt, and I think we always made him feel guilty about that because he was constantly traveling mm. to set up such a business empire it is something that he did have to travel a lot which is understandable but what I do know is that whenever he came back he was a hundred percent or a hundred and fifty percent or two thousand percent invested in his kids right you want to <laughs> yeah. so do you want to tell uh, a little bit about how you did get involved in okay. with your kids <coughs> so if Manoj was the soccer dad I was probably the missing dad <laughs> so in any event, you know, like kids growing, they have kids growing in U.S. They have so many events yeah. after school, so I was not there. Obviously, Suman was taking them and back and forth. Sometimes I would go because for some reason I happened to be home and I took them. So first of all, I wouldn't know half the people who were there, so they will look at me as if my son has come with a stranger. Then the then Rishi or Raj will have to explain to them, oh, that's my dad. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> so, then I will start all over again, shake hands with everybody, yeah. you know, make them aware that I am his dad. And then that thing will again repeat after six months because then I'll go back again. I have forgotten most of the faces and I'll start all over again. I am his dad. But, see, fatherhood sometimes is more than taking your kids back and forth. Fatherhood or being a father is probably the most thankless job as well as most rewarding job at the same time. And see like, you know, a typical Indian father, my kid should get all A grades in school, go to Ivy College, Ivy School when he goes to college, marries into the community or in the mm. caste mm. and should have a hedge fund job in New York City. So then that is all, <laughs> life is all said, I am very happy. So what happens most of the time that we tend to live our dreams. Mm -hmm. we, try, we tend to impose our dreams on the kids without sometimes giving the kid to prosper. Let kid dream. Let what, what is the kid dreaming about? And that is what I learned from my elder son. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I initially I would like, you know, why didn't you not get a good grade? I'm not to say that he does not get good grades, but you know, we were, we were always, always that five person gap shouldn't be but, there. But it's actually, always be a nine hundred percent. Well, he get. should actually boast where his son is. Hmm. I, I think his son is one of the rarest type of kids in this world because he's one of the twenty kids across the world who has been accepted into. Yeah, Canada. well, uh, Raj was accepted at the Huntsman program hmm. at uh, oh. Lupin, um, but so I must admit. So when he was applying for his application, right, for the college, so early decision, ED decision, so that's like one shot you get you mm. know, to apply. And, and it, this was a reach school for him, a far reach school for him. But he said, Dad, I think you must let me apply here. We, were, we, had, a big, we had a big fight in the, at home. We had big, big argument back and forth. But he said, let me apply, Dad, let me apply. What is the worst that can happen? I will not get it. I will get it somewhere else. And that's when I realized that we should let them take some decisions in life. And, and I'm so happy that ultimately he prevailed over me. And today he's there and, and we feel proud, you know, both Suman and I. That right. is so great. And, and I think that is a lesson uh, to be learned for a lot of our Indian fathers yeah. out there who are yeah. watching us because they come in with a very different mindset according to you know our upbringing, according to our Indian scriptures. And I think Manoj is gonna to touch on that as well. Yes, of course, but before that, I would like to ask you a question. That, uh, that is that um, sometime, no, not sometime, all the time, mostly I have seen that, the, the, I mean, um, like all the dads, they're like quite far from the child. It's a lot of like miscommunication. The gap is a lot. I mean, what you are saying, like, I mean, uh, maybe uh, you are not there at the moment, but a lot of parents I have seen that who are there, but they, 
really don't talk at all or maybe less. So what? Yeah. Well, th that is you the, the Indian it? concept, right? Mm -hmm. Where the father is the uh, is the giver, the protector, and is there in the background, and uh, they don't step in on a day-to-day -day management. But and that is what we impose on our kids as well, and that is what needs to change. That communication needs to change, and I think all of these things come from our dharma shastra, right? I, if I'm yeah. not mistaken, right? Yeah. So you know, like we we talk about this uh, a lot in our uh, Sanatana Vidyalaya classes. We we talk to the kids that how our culture is and how we have been from you know, like uh, hundreds to thousands of years. If mm. you see our shastra, our Rama, how he, like we call him like an ideal person, how he lived and all that. So we talk it, we say around generally like eight to nine principles we follow as a, as a father, which has been coming to us as from our culture, from our Hindu culture or Sanatana Vidya, Sanatana Dharma culture. Yeah. So being a, being a protector as uh, you talked, being a, uh, an exemplar, you know, like you set up an example, you uh, you you know, like you you have your kid uh, teach the discipline that you know, like they, they need to have some level of discipline in their life. Um, you you tell them that how to become a really a responsible person. You guide them about like being how to be a little bit spiritual also. You know, like at the end of the day, I think or maybe in their during their life they also need uh, a little bit of spirituality. So yeah. we we talk about that in our Sanatana classes, and I personally follow that at my home so it's it's it's, it's really good yeah so i think that that is where our traditional culture upbringing is that the father is there in the background and you follow what the father says yeah. and do and i think uh, that is evolving and that is changing and i think we see that uh, with karan how he interacts right i mean i think uh, how is it that you are sort of the the giver and you are there in the background or you are actually on ground uh, I, I'm more up front than in the background, and I know my wife, Sharmila, always has a little bit of an issue with that because I'm overly involved, at least I want to be, uh, in all the different aspects, like uh, Manoj mentioned and, and Sunilji mentioned as well. Uh, it's not only the protector, uh, I want to be the disciplinarian as well, and it's, it's a very tight role for me because uh, there is a father that's still involved for her, mm -hmm. so I, I can't cross certain boundaries, but I can still make the rules, and the rules in the house have to still be followed, and the rules in the house are the rules. Um, but as far as being involved as well, every single activity that she has that I can attend, and that's on the weekend, I will make sure I attend it, regardless of what weekend it is, regardless of what we are doing, regardless of what our plans are, and that's something I want to give to her to make her understand, because again, it's a difference between male kids and female kids, and I will touch, that, touch upon that later. But for me, it's not only to show her, but for, it's to show her how she should be treated by men, and how a man is supposed to treat her while she's growing up, so that she can understand what it is when a man loves you, what it is when a man cares for you, and how you're supposed to expect someone to do that for you. So if you grow up and someone's mistreating you, you should know that immediately. Well, I would like to ask you um, one quick question to all three of you. The best time you have ever spent with your kids? Hmm. Do you want to take well, that first? I think, uh, Trivia to me, question. To, 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 <laughs> to me, I think every moment I spend is really spend is really good. You know, like uh, um, um, best time thinking in a snap quickly could be that uh, like uh, meh, um, mostly with him doing swimming. So he does, my son show me, he swims. Uh, whenever he swims, I am with him. Uh, though his, uh, he, when we go to swim meets, you know, like there, you, you end up like a five to six hours there. Yeah. Um, but actually the kid swims only three events, which are like a one minute, two minute, or three minutes. So you are there for six hours. So it gives me time to bond with him, talk to him about different things, how things are going with his life, you know, like, those are the times where I find more attached. We are, we are sitting there, we have nothing else to do. He sometimes goes and plays with his friends and all that, but I think that is a time where we get more bonding, more communication, how we you know, like how we can uh, learn about different things, so. So how about Sunil? <coughs> well, I cannot <laughs> say that every moment spent is the best time with the kid. I don't think I can say that. But whatever time we spend together, is the time 
probably the best time. I don't spend that much time with them. But I must say that when they like they come and inquire, ask me that, Dad, how was work? What else are you doing? You know, is there something new going on? How? So they seem to care. When they care, as parents, we are caring, right, all the time. When they care, you know, like, suppose you are sitting on the sofa and, and Rishi will come, why, why, you, why you look like you are so beat up, what happened to you? You know, like that. So that gives a feeling that somebody does care about you too. And that is, so on that note, we must, see, we, in America, we talk so much about activities. Activity. Oh, I have to take my son, my daughter here, there, from that activity, I will take it to another activity. But sometimes in all this process, we forget the values. How do we inculcate values in them? Why let you active? Suppose we are all sitting down for having lunch or dinner. And I serve the food on my plate and I start eating. I can do that, right? But if I am asking all around the table and I'm getting up to serve on other plates before I put it on my plate, they are learning that. That is such an important lesson in life. Mm -hmm. Because ultimately, you have to be a good human being. Successful human being in America, you will become somehow. I know that. <laughs> a good human being, they can only learn from their parents. You're driving in the car, everybody's together, and somebody comes and cuts across in your path, and you like you get all jumbled up and all start shouting and all that. But Remember your kids are watching. The person who has come in front of your car may have 100 reasons why he came. So don't become, you know, because everything that you do will be followed by your, by your kids. They will remember that. So this is very important that you try to, when you go to a shop, suppose you go to 7-Eleven, you take a cup of coffee, and the coffee is cold, is not to your liking. Most of the people will take the coffee, drink it. No, you should stand up. If the coffee is cold, it's not to your liking, you have paid for the coffee, then you should tell them back, ma'am, this coffee is not done right way. Kindly change it. Kindly make it more right. The kids are watching that. They will learn. Because these are the things which are more important. They, these things will take them through the life when we are not there for them. So how about Karan? For me, the, the best times are the alone times. Yeah. Um, Jordan has activities, like Mr. Mr. It's like Sunilji said, all the day, all day. All After school, she has activities. If she's not in school, she has activities. We get certain times I'll pick her up from her grandmom's house or something. Those are the best times that I have because those are the times she used to be on her cell phone because she, that's what a nine-year-old, she has a cell phone, she's using her cell phone playing games. Put the cell phone down, talk to me. Tell me about your day. Tell me what happened in your day. Small little things. Oh, the, the, there was a fight over a color pencil. I want to hear that. Why? Because in her day, that's the biggest thing that has happened. For me, it's no big deal. It's a color pencil, no problem. But for her, it's a big deal. That's her life. The more I learn about her life, the more she wants to talk. Now she'll sit in the car, phone's nowhere in sight, and she'll talk to me nonstop. She'll tell me, 15 minutes, she'll tell me everything that happened during the day, top to bottom. We'll continue talking to me while we're going in the house. We'll start talking to me even if I have to go uh, and do something else. She'll follow me and talk to me because she feels that connection. She wants to share. And to me, that, those are the best times because those are the times that I can actually learn more about what makes her who she is. And then I can mold her into who I think she should uh, end up being. I just loved your point, but here is one question, uh, like the trivia question for Dr. Meherotra as well. Oh. Being a dad. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So, so I just, I just want to ask you the same thing. That what do you think that the best time you spent with your kids? And I think I will reiterate anything that all three of them have said. It's the time, the alone time, being with them, and. The best time is when they actually go ahead and, and ask you, what's going on? Why do you look like this? I, I remember one day I got sick and they, they came running to me. Oh my God, what happened? Let me get this for you. Let me get for And I said, really? You know, so, um, right. so they are watching and, and they are really learning everything from you. 
And I think that is an extremely valuable point and an extremely critical point for all parents to know that all fathers and parents need to have that open communication with their child. Because unless you communicate with them, they are not going to be able to tell you. Mm -hmm. And that whole uh, you know, uh, upbringing that we've had where the father would be in the background is evolving because our generations are evolving. And I think it is time to get invested yeah. and be a lot more than just the provider. All right, I think I asked the wrong question. Now I'm <laughs> changing the question again. <laughs> All right, because I, I really want to make this a fun episode. So I just want my viewers to enjoy it every bit. So this is another trivia question for all four of these dads from my <laughs> side that what is your child's favorite food? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Trivia question. That's easy. Pasta. Pasta with butter. All right. How about, how about my son? It is actually from Indian food is paneer. So I ju just sometimes tell him that he likes all milk products. Okay. okay. So, so I tell him, someday I tell him, I, I always tell him that someday when you're going to get married, I'm going to have all kind of products, like maybe a cow in in the front, and you know, like everyone gets milk, and you know, like everyone comes over there, they, milk, they bath, take a bath in the milk, and all different types of dishes of paneer are there. People get lassi, people get everything. So it's like milk product. That's milk what okay. he loves paneer. Okay. Make sure to invite all right. All right. How about Sunil? How about Sunil? Okay. Okay. So my two sons, right? Yes. Totally different. Okay. So elder son Raj, hmm. he loves. A full course Indian meal, okay. especially if it is prepared by Suman, my wife. So he will be eating with his fingers, you know, the way he's mixing it, the way he's breaking the bread, you know, putting it in the sabji and like he's enjoying it. You can see on his face. On the other hand, now Rishi on the other hand, he will suppose he eats Indian food one day, then for next 29 days, he like, mom. <laughs> Enough of this shit already. <laughs> 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 I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so, it is it is like almost night and day. I personally like Indian food. Mm. I cooked at home, obviously. Mm. And uh, But Rishi has his own uh, choices. But now he is learning to, I think, relish more Indian food. Uh, I hope. Especially okay. when he'll go to college, then he will miss. I know for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, two, so two days a month? <laughs> <laughs> two, three. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, so how about from Herutra? Uh, same thing. I think my son loves Indian food, and okay. my daughter loves my, uh, you know, food that I make, uh, oh. pizza, and, and some of the other stuff that I make. Uh, oh, she loves that. He's not a doctor; he's a chef. Too. All <laughs> right, <laughs> we we are going to open up this chef doctor in another session because <laughs> if we start talking about it, it will be really and, and actually, but, we, we, but we would love to know that what type of food you cook, so <laughs> I can talk to uh, your one patients thing, what, out there, so they can come and <laughs> visit you sometime. <laughs> Right, I sure. do. We, I we, do we'll we'll have a nutrition uh, session one of these other days. Yes. So, yes. Uh, but one thing that I do want to open up there again, which we I think because we're enjoying this episode so much, we forgot that this is a live call-in show. And if any of the viewers have any questions, they're more yes. than welcome to uh, you to know call, call in. Yes. And also, if we don't get around to you answering your questions, you can always uh, message us on Facebook, and even uh, email us, and uh, we'll get try to get back to you on those. Right, absolutely, so. absolutely. You can always email us at ragini at manatv.net. It's R-A-A-G-I-N-I -A -A at M-A-N-A-T-V.net. It is, uh, I mean, really a pleasure that we all are here tonight. We spoke a lot, and I do believe that all these parents, they really know their kids. Even though they're not home, sometimes they are, but I mean, like Sunil, not all the time you're home like you, not all the time home. Like Karan, not all the time home. Also, like Manoj, not all the time home. But, no, 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 but definitely. yeah, but knowing your kids from inside out, that's what makes the parenthood lovely. And yeah. I really want to thank you from bottom of my heart and of course from our viewers to come here and stay here with us and share your stories in the, I mean, uh, yes, in this uh, great platform of Health is Wealth. Right, and, and on parting, I want to say to all our viewers that the more involved you are, the more you communicate with your child, the better their outcome is going to be. So all of the medical research shows that, that the cognitive development, the educational achievement, the developmental milestones, all of them are accelerated if both of the parents are involved. And if both parents are not in the picture, 
at least the parent, the father, if that's who the primary caretaker is, needs to be as involved as possible. And it is no longer the generation where the father is just the provider. I think uh, with things changing so rapidly in this world, the fathers have to take a much, much more involved role, and they will reap the benefits from it going forward. Right. Thank you so much, Dr. Mehrotra, for coming in. And of course, uh, you can yeah. join us again next week and keep watching Health is Wealth on the And on thank on you very TV. much, uh, Sunil, Manoj, and Karan for coming on the show and sharing your insight. And I think we've gotten some really valuable information from all of you. So thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, viewers, from us, it is a good night. Stay well, stay safe, and always remember, health is wealth. What is that? That is my bang is playing. Hello friends and welcome to Health is Wealth. And tonight we are celebrating fatherhood. And you are thinking, why still Father's Day we're celebrating? Come on, you have to stay with us because June is the month for dads. And that is why we are celebrating Father's Day here again. And we would love to welcome Dr. Mehrotra in our show. And as you know that I'm Ragini and coming to give you all the information about health and how you can become a wealthy person with a good health. And tonight we are going to discuss a lot of things with these beautiful panelists right here. But first, let's welcome Dr. Mehrotra. Thank you so much, Ragini. It is great to be back again and once again with the viewers of Mana TV. And this is a perfect platform to talk about health and today we are so fortunate to have our three esteemed panelists, uh, fathers. We're typically used to seeing mothers, but today is about fathers. And to my right is Mr. Sunil Bagaria, who is uh, a highly accomplished entrepreneur, businessman, world traveler, uh, of the CEO of GDB International. Uh, welcome, Sunil, uh, you, to the show. Thank you. And next to him, we have Manoj. Uh, Manoj is uh, uh, working in the IT industry and a father um, and also a teacher at our Sanatan Vidyalay, uh, teaching about the culture and the values of Sanatan Dharma. And welcome, Manoj. Thank you. And finally, on the right, we have Mr. Karan, Karan Virmani, who is the chief financial officer of a major freight company. and. Karan is going to bring us a very different perspective of fatherhood. And uh, welcome, Karan. And we'd love to hear more about your story. Excellent. Thank you. Good? Oh, yeah. Thank you. 